Who doesn't love classic westerns? Other than the daily cowboy adventures they portray in America's frontier, they make it seem like daily life in the Wild West was entertaining. While it's easy to look at figures like Jeremiah Johnson and Buffalo Bill Cody and think you could make it just like they did, we've all likely been curious about our chances of survival in this rapidly changing environment. In today's video, we're talking about what life looked like for people in the Wild West. Now, let's dive into the daily lives of the people that lived on the frontier. Illnesses were major killers. The old westerns would make you assume that gun violence was the number one killer for people living on the frontier, but the reality on the ground was death due to an internal factor we don't think much of today, illness. In particular, it was this pesky waterborne disease that we know as cholera. At that time, very few people knew about waterborne diseases, and hygiene was not in its tip-top shape like today. The lack of awareness led to a cholera epidemic in 1873 that spread throughout the frontier, and there was no disinfectant to help curb the spread, leading to loss of lives. Aside from cholera, your entry into the world of the Wild West would pit you against any number of illnesses such as smallpox, scurvy, dysentery, tuberculosis, pneumonia, measles, and anything else whose cure and vaccine didn't exist. To say the least, it was survival of the fittest at play, and death from illness was guaranteed for many. Shootings were not as common as you think. Other than the illnesses that claimed the lives of countless people, killings were a reality. If you couldn't deal with that, you were forced to flee. In terms of the number of people dying, though, it was not as common as the movies showcase. While shootings did happen, many cases existed where people were willing to solve disputes civilly. Gun control laws were very strict in some jurisdictions as well, and many places required people to stop by the local sheriff's office and register their firearms before being allowed to live in the area. That being said, the fear of dying a violent death was constantly on people's minds, as the threat was real and could happen at any time. Cowboys were different from what we know today. Ever dreamed of becoming a cowboy and following in the footsteps of the Lone Ranger? Do you find yourself fantasizing about the heroic lives of these individuals? If you enjoy settling in one place for a long time, you may need to reconsider your cowboy dreams. Life on the frontier was not easy for anyone, even cowboys. To become one, you needed to commit to an incredibly lonely existence with a lifestyle that required you to be fit at all times. While this sounds appealing, Cowboys received peanuts when it came to payment, even on the best days. And because of this, they hustled hard by doing a wide range of side jobs and traveling across the states to look for work. A cowboy was always available to repair buildings and fences, herd cattle, work for the local cattle drives, and care for horses. With the advent and growth of the beef industry in America's North during the Gilded Age, they were the people that took cattle to slaughterhouses and facilitated the growth of the industry questionable hygiene standards. Today we take for granted that we should sanitize our hands regularly and take a bath at least once or twice a day to stay clean. During the years of the Wild West, hygiene was suggestible at best and non-existent at worst. The reality was that the typical family at the time lived without the hygienic conveniences of today, such as shampoo, soap, and toilet paper. Many people survived by making their soap at home, and the bonus was the lack of running water which meant baths were infrequent in most cases. To enjoy a bath, you had to have buckets, fill them from some water source, and haul them into your house somehow, boil them on a fireplace to kill lurking mystery organisms, and wait for it to cool before use. With those procedures, it's unsurprising that taking a bath was the last task on people's minds. Women being societal afterthoughts. Feminism has helped us come a long way from the days of the past, and if you're a female, you would know very well that the life in the Midwest would be unkind to you. In those days, women were at the bottom of the totem pole in society. First, women folk could not get a job. The harsh realities of life confined them to being housewives with very little say in the progress of their communities and families. They lived at home with children or alone. Their everyday lives were lived in isolation, as there were very few tight-knit communities, and your nearest neighbor was some miles away. Numerous sources indicate insanity what the locals called the prairie madness, as well as depression, were real fears. Because mental health care was non-existent, many people turned to alcohol to cure their problems. Hence the common sight of drunken men and women fighting in saloon bars and killing each other. Getting to the Wild West was difficult. It's easy to think about your fantasy self in the Wild West and go on daily adventures if you could, but getting there was an exercise in perseverance. The routes to get to America's frontier were deserted and dangerous, 
which increased the chances of en route deaths. Findings from Britannica show that between the 1840s and 1860s, close to 400,000 people used the Oregon Trail, and one in 10 people died en route to the west. These deaths occurred due to various circumstances, some by disease, others by gunshot wounds, drownings, accidents, and harsh weather conditions, as well as many more causes. These causes also included rattlesnake bites and stampedes from their herds. Because it was commonplace for people to travel across long distances with their herds that included oxen and horses, mishaps and riding accidents led to sure deaths, as well as the ongoing risk of being crushed by wagons or their wheels. Swinging saloon doors were real. Ever thought about the reality of living without air conditioning in a very hot climate? You may take it for granted today, but the lack of air conditioning systems in the buildings of the frontier meant that beehives of activity like saloons got smoky and hot very quickly. For these areas, doors were modified to swing in two directions to allow fresh air inside and let the stale body stench-filled air out. Remember that daily baths were not a thing. The batwing-style doors had other purposes too. Aside from promoting air circulation, they also allowed the sounds of laughter, music, and noise to drift out, which could lead to good business days for saloon owners as more passers-by trickled in. When the day was done, saloon owners kept their alcohol reserves safe from bandits by installing double doors, the usual batwing doors surrounded by a solid floor-to-ceiling doors with very strong locks to keep things safe. Alcoholic beverages were suspicious in quality. We all know by this point how common alcohol was, particularly whiskey. What you probably didn't know was how uneven your drinking experience would be, thanks to the glaringly absent legislation governing the quality and content of alcoholic drinks. These laws came from around 1897, as well as no one having the time or energy to create smooth, great-tasting alcohol. Most drinks that were labeled and sold as whiskey in those days were combinations of whiskey and other liquids only the owners knew. That meant you could consume anything in your whiskey glass, from cider vinegar, creek water, grain alcohol, distilled molasses, and even axle grease and fruit juices. Tasty stuff, indeed. Opioid Addiction – The Imported Menace You may assume that opioids are a modern menace, but that was not the case. Introduced by Chinese settlers who wanted to take advantage of California's gold rush era and looking for work on the Transcontinental Railroad, opioids quickly became a problem and their usage boomed among the American settlers by 1870. This is a problem that sounds like it only afflicted prostitutes and gamblers, but here's a twist you never thought of. It also spread to the average ranchers, farmers, and even their wives. What's even more ironic was that about 250,000 opioid addicts joined the temperance movement in the 1890s. Yes, you heard it correctly. Opium addicts were strongly against alcohol, but their drug of choice was conveniently out of the crosshairs of the movement. There were some interesting fuel choices. Did you know that trees were a rarity in many parts of the frontier? Due to the painful lack of trees, people had to turn to interesting sources of fuel when they were trekking across the region and setting up their camps. In this part of the country, dried buffalo poop was the answer. Now, it's understandable that this sounds disgusting, as you can't imagine shoveling buckets of buffalo dung when you're starting a campfire. However, it was surprisingly clean because its fire was odorless, very quick, and easy to start, and could get hot enough to cook most foods. The people call them prairie chips or meadow pies. So what do you think? Does the idea of living in the Wild West appeal to your tastes? Let us know in the comments, and while you're at it, check out some of these other videos from our channel.